Today's video is based on you recovering your ZFS pool after an OS installation or failure. Now, keep in mind that a lot of the tutorials out there are generally based on knowledge such as exporting your metadata before you need to import it. And for me that kind of seemed like a bit of a misnomer because who knows that they need a backup before they need the backup. So here I'm going to go uh, through an example of what would happen if I was to completely erase and reinstall my OS and based on that reinstallation then realize that I have difficulty doing the import which is basically the scenario we have here. So I'm going to first of all make sure that we're installing not to the disks that obviously we want to recover later. So we're going to install to the same OS disk and leave the other disks that we know are part of our ZFF uh, pool for later. So just running through the general OS installation steps and from this point of view we're going to skip ahead quite rapidly over the next few steps and speed up the video a bit since we don't want to make this a 30 minute video for the installation. Now as we're going through the installation obviously there's some post installation steps that we'll need to do as well which is including the uh, apt-get and in this case I'm using the zfs-fuse package so that's the one that I'll need to reinstall in a moment to allow me to effectively get my data back. I'll also show you a couple of the steps that I tried that um, otherwise in other tutorials are kind of the go-to item but don't work. So first of all now that we have an OS installed let's see that we can physically see our disks. So we're just going to list the disks. So even though I get a permissions denied you can see that there are at least five disks. So four of those are going to be part of our file system and the other one is our base OS disk. Now to save myself some time and not need to retype everything every two minutes, I'm going to go ahead and log in as root, uh, simply because otherwise I'm going to get prompted for permissions quite a lot during the rest of the steps. So after I'm logged in as root, I can run the uh, fdisk-l to get a list of all the disks, and as you can see, we have our four 5 gigabyte partitions. Now these are going to be part of our ZFS um, demo as I have a RAID 10 set so I have two mirrors uh, acting together as one logical drive or in this case mount point. Um, we also obviously are going to need the ZFS fuse which I used previously to create them so I'm going to go ahead and install that. Now this is a useful package or in terms of it's a straightforward no frills works out of the box type package I will say that I did encounter one bug with it, which is sometimes the service doesn't seem to be started right after the installation. Um, don't know why, maybe it just needs a reboot afterwards, but in this case I can't be bothered to do the reboot, so I'm just going to go ahead and start the service and make sure that it's actually running before I do anything else. Now we can also check to see what pools are available after the installation. And as you can see, we have no pools, and if I check the status, you should also see that there is no status. Now, quickly flipping over to what is the normal tutorial guides, we can see that we have a couple of uh, switches, the import, the force, and the destroy, using all of the those possible options. Um, I found the only one that really worked for me was to import the destroyed category, um, and that was simply because the others just didn't show up anything, and I'll show you what I mean. So if I run through the stereotypical import commands, which is the uh, zpool import dash a, um, yeah, if you remember the dash, it should list any available. And that doesn't retrieve anything. I try with the f, that doesn't bring me back anything either, which is the force command. I try the f dev, um, no luck. And as you can see, obviously at this point, if you had just had a clean install, uh, you would probably be panicking going, oh my god, where did my data go? However, there is light at the end of the tunnel. So if we do a dash D slash dev, so this will list all the disks underneath it. And as you can see, we actually have a pool there. Now, equally, the documentation isn't very clear on this either. It did take me uh, three readings of it before I realized what I'd done wrong. So my initial attempt here was to I say, oh, well, it must already recognize that there's a pool, let's do the import. Uh, no, that's not how it works. 
Um, you do in fact need to use the same command and then just add the name of the pool that you want to import. So if there was multiple pools available then they would be listed. So now we have effectively imported the pool. Uh, you, there's no successful or unsuccessful message which is a bit alarming but hey. But we can use the status and list to prove that A the import worked and B that it's nice and healthy. So we now have potentially all of our data back that we might have had. And if we go ahead and we look just very quickly at the file system, we'll also see that it's mounted to the same location that it was earlier, which in my case was the My Pool. So everything's working as expected. Now, hopefully this will help you out if you're trying to do a recovery. And if it's useful, give us a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do. And as always, subscribe for more content.